Hello, everyone. This is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is six ways astral projection can improve your life. Before we get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to support this channel on Patreon, you can do so. When you join, you get advanced episodes on Sunday, a library of downloaded episodes for your podcast app, a Patreon email where we can talk back and forth, and a new chat room for patrons. And that's, uh, that's fun too. So if you're interested, all you have to do is go to the description and you'll see a link there where you can find out more about Patreon. Next up, private lessons. If you'd like a lesson to learn how to astral project, be more than glad to work with you. Uh, all you have to do is go down to the description. There's an email there and just request more information. Okay, six ways astral projection can improve your life. Before I get into it, I just want to mention that I am trying to get back to Amphibia. Now, the people who've been with me for a long time, you know what I'm talking about when I talk about the planet Amphibia. For the newer people, you may not know. So what I can do is be a teacher for a second and assign you some homework. Of course, you can always copy your paper off someone else, or you can decide to blow off the homework. Once again, you know, I'm not your dad. And I can't tell you what to do. But there was two episodes uh, that, that I, uh, I posted years ago. And the first one was Astral Journey to an Alien Civilization. Then I went back there again in an episode called Return to Amphibia. And that's spelled A-M-P-H-I-B-I-A. If you go into YouTube in the search area and you put those two titles, you put those two titles in, you'll see that there's a golden icon. It's really obnoxious. You can't miss it. That'll pop up. And you can go ahead and, and watch those uh, in order, you know, starting with the journeys right on to return. And you'll kind of get up to speed on what my past experiences are with this alien civilization. Anyway, I haven't been there for two years and I'm looking to go back uh, just to kind of hook up with my friends there possibly just to chill a little bit because after my recent travel to the dimension of World War III, that really kind of threw me for a loop. So I wouldn't mind a little bit of a, of a uh, vacation. However, I've been having some difficulty getting back there. Uh, I don't always talk about this to y'all because um, all you want to hear about is the experience, but sometimes I have trouble getting back to where I want to go uh, we don't live in a perfect world. Astral projection isn't a science quite yet. At least not to me. It's still a bit of an art. All I can promise you is I'm going to keep on trying, and I know I'm going to get there. So keep your fingers crossed and look for a future episode. But first, let's get into this six ways astral projection can improve your life. The first is lessen the fear of physical death. We're all very different people. But I can say that we all have one thing in common. To one degree or another, our ego fears physical death. To some degree. Some are terrified. Others are just mildly upset and worried about it. And there's a huge gamut there in between. It's one of the things that humans have worried about Ever since we became self-aware, you know, they can ask questions like, well, where do we go? What happens? Are we just extinct when our physical body dies? Does it all go black? Do we go to some cloud somewhere and play a harp? Uh, what happens? And, and this is a question that humans have asked, like I said, ever since we gained awareness. So it, it is a question that, that I think probably everyone on earth shares to one degree or another. Why astral projection is helpful here? Well, astral projection demonstrates in a very visceral way that you are not your physical body. Your physical body is a car. You travel in it for a period of time. When that car wears out, you sell it, leave it in the junkyard. You're no longer, you don't longer need it. Engine's all burned out. But you leave and you go elsewhere. It's the same thing with um, the physical body and the astral body. 
that which is you, the true you, is immortal. Yes, you will go through many cars <laughs> in your lifetimes, but none of those cars are you. They are merely vehicles for experience. That's it. And when they are no longer useful, when they are burned out, you leave them and you go elsewhere. That understanding can take a big load of fear off your plate. Now, I can't say that I have zero fear about physical passing. I think there's still, there's still a little fear in there lurking somewhere in a corner. But really, my biggest fear, if you want to put it that way, is I, I really would rather not experience a lot of physical pain in the passing process, but that really is my biggest fear. Not the passing itself, it's just I really don't, I really don't want to engage in a lot of pain on the way out. So I think that's a big plus right there, relieving yourself of that fear of extinction because you are immortal. Number two, you can scout possible futures. When you become an advanced projector, you can scout out different futures. I have seen a number of personal futures for myself. I haven't shared most of them because really they're very personal to me. And it's not something that, number one, I really feel comfortable sharing, but also number two, it's not something that I would consider of general interest. It's of interest to me because it's about my possible future lives. Uh, in this lifetime and in the next lifetime. And I get a chance to scope some of these things out and learn from them, make selections, make choices that lead me into certain directions that I want to go. That's a big plus because to most people, non-projectors, the future is unknowable. And keep in mind, though, that even for astral projectors, I talk about possible futures. The future isn't fixed. There are many possible futures, just like many different rows of dominoes. It's up to you to decide which domino in which row you knock over. And with astral projection, you get a chance to have a little bit of a peek into that great dark mystery. Number three, it puts your physical life in perspective. When you know that you are immortal, the true you, then your physical life is important. It's certainly a vehicle that you've chosen where you can learn the important lessons that you came there to learn of life, of existence, of love. But it's not, um, it's not so important that if you mess up, oh, you've ruined everything for all eternity. No, no. You made a mistake. You're going to correct it this lifetime. If not, you're going to correct it in the next one. So your physical lifetime is important, but it's not your only one. You don't just get one shot at it and, and that's it. And that's quite frankly, was always my concern when I was being raised as a Christian with that basic belief system that you got one life and based on that one life, there's an eternal judgment, whether you go up to heaven or down to, uh, down to hell for all eternity. Even as a kid, I would think to myself, that doesn't seem fair because we're not all born on equal footing. I was born to a middle-class family in a smaller family-oriented town with good, solid parents who loved me and they didn't always have all the money for all the things I wanted, but they had the money for all the things I needed I never had to worry about having clothes or shoes on my feet or, or food on the table. But, so I was lucky. But there's a lot of people out there who don't get that kind of start. Maybe they're born to a set of parents who are awful parents, awful people who abuse them, who raise them in a criminal lifestyle. Uh, you know, why should they be judged on the same level that I'm judged. It's like, it's like having a race where all the racers don't start at the same place, where racer number one has to start half a mile back, 
Racer number two is a quarter of a mile back, and then racer number three is right at the starting line, and then a couple other racers are ahead. And then you say, go, you fire off the gun, and then they all race around. Well, guess what? More often than not, the people who are in the, who are in the lead to start with keep that lead. So how is it fair to then hand out trophies based on, well, you're the winner and you're the loser? when there was not an equal start. See, that never made sense to me. And the true nature of reality, with many lifetimes, proves that out. It shows that we are all going through a wide variety of lifetimes. Chances are, at one time we were poor, another time we were rich, another time we were somewhere in the middle, one time we had great parents, another time we didn't. So, all of this you know, goes into the, uh, the lesson group. And uh, it, it, I think it, it's, it's a much more fair way of going about uh, uh, spiritual advancement because it means that everybody eventually evens out. Everybody's got different types of, of possibilities, different types of, of starting lines so that it evens itself out. That always made a heck of a lot more sense to me uh, as, as being a lot more fair. Uh, because uh, trying to judge everyone based on one lifetime as if we all had the same things and the same start, it's just not realistic, and it, it certainly is not fair. Okay, number four, increase your spiritual knowledge. Well, if increasing your spiritual knowledge is on your list of to-do, <laughs> then you're at the right place. If you're listening to this channel, you are on the path of spiritual advancement. And, and what you learn on this channel and on many other books and channels is you are learning these spiritual advancement lessons, which you will use throughout all eternity. And certainly astral projection is one very important way that you can take advantage of this lifetime in learning spiritual advancement. Number five, you can meet your guide and angel and other entities like nature spirits, for example. If you're someone who likes to meet people, or if you're more of an introvert, still you might be interested in meeting your guide, your angel, and having discussions with uh, him or her, and getting answers to some questions. Uh, that can be of interest to a lot of people. Certainly was of interest to me. You also get to meet a lot of different entities out there of all types that you don't necessarily get to do typically in your physical life. Uh, for instance, like I said, the nature spirits. I don't consider myself an expert at that because I tend to come on a little too strong for some of these nature spirits. They're very tentative, for example. But I have interacted with a few of them on a very short, uh, brief type of level. And I know there are people out there who are much, they t are much more gentle of spirit, much more laid back so that they get along with these types of entities. But that's just one example. There are so many other entities out there that you can interact with in the astral who can, uh, who can help you broaden your level of experience. And if that's something that's of interest to you, well, astral projection is one of the best ways, in my opinion, that you can do that. Lastly, rescue work. Not everybody is interested in this particular topic. But if you're someone who likes to help people, well, rescue work is one way to do that. There are folks who, when they pass, are deeply mired in anger, in suffering, in depression, who are tied to the physical because of their own bonds that they have laid upon themselves, and they end up trapped in this nether world, and it's not a good existence. It's, uh, I mean, just imagine being trapped in a fog where you can't interact with people that you want to interact with. You're, you're betwixt and between. It kind of reminds me of the Catholic version 
of purgatory. Purgatory in, in, in the, uh, the, the Roman Catholic belief is you're not in heaven, you're not in hell, you're kind of in this weird middle ground, this weird waiting room, uh, you're, you know, where you're, you're neither here nor there. Uh, quite frankly, it always sounded to me uh, scarier than either of the other two options. Uh, I don't want to be in some eternal waiting room like somebody who's trapped in some doctor's office for an eternity, waiting and waiting and waiting to be seen. Uh, I, I want you either to kick me out of the office or please let me, let me come in, let the doctor see me. I don't like just being in this waiting room. So if you wish to help these people, if you wish to participate in the rescue work, astral projection is a great way to do that. Okay, those are the six ways astral projection can help to improve your life. If you have any additional ones, why don't you put them down in the comments section. If you have any questions, please do that as well. Like this if uh, you found it interesting. Share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as I said, questions and comments. Uh, what other ways do you think astral projection has helped you? And, you know, what questions do you have about any of the things that I've just named here or any other ideas that you have. At any rate, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.